The day that Mr. Dunn told me I had been selected this year's faculty speaker uh, was really one of the highlights of my professional career. Uh, I was incredibly excited, incredibly touched, and I want to thank you, the class of 2010, for selecting me. Of course, soon after I had that great feeling, I realized this meant I had to write a speech. And then the anxiety set in, and I started thinking uh, to myself, uh, would I need sources? Uh, is there a rubric to the activity? Uh, and if it's not ready on the day of graduation, can I get some partial credit, perhaps? <laughs> Um, I had to push these worries inside and move on and I decided what I would do is simply speak from the heart and that's what I'm going to try to do here today. The first thing I'd like to say is that I'm, I'm particularly pleased to be asked to speak to this year's graduating class for two very important reasons. One, uh, my stepson Aaron Messick is graduating with you guys today. and. Uh, and, and, and that makes it uh, you know, just a, a very special moment for me that I can be here. And I also feel a, a kinship with all the parents out here. Uh, I feel like I, I think I, I know a little bit about what you've gone through over the last 18 years. Uh, I don't know if your uh, kids are exactly like Aaron, but many of you probably got caught up in all those crazes, those childhood crazes. We, we went through the Pokemon stage, which is very exciting. There was a Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, crazy Bones were popular for a little while. We had Pogs uh, made an appearance. Um, and then there was the yo-yo the thing. Uh, Aaron practiced with his ex-brain obsessively. In fact, I thought we were going to have to have the string surgically removed um, because he was so into to doing those, those tricks. Um, and then finally, in, in senior year, he hit a squirt gun phase, uh, which was really a surprise to, 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 to me, but uh, squirt gun, luckily, only lasted uh, a week, I believe, so that was a, was a rather quick one. Um, it's been an amazing journey, and I can't believe that all those trips to Neckers are coming to an end. In just a few short months, uh, Judy and I will be bringing Aaron to college, and we couldn't be more proud of the young man he's become. The second reason why I'm particularly pleased to speak to this class is because I used to teach at Central Elementary School. And this class of graduates has some of my last third grade students. Can I get another shout out from Central School? A little shout out. Lartnick in the, his house. Remember Lartnick? I'll explain it later. All right. um, back when I taught third grade, I used to ride a moped to work. And I loved it. It was this black Targa LX. I would, I would get up in the morning, I would put on my faux leather jacket, my, my helmet with full face visor, and I would uh, speed off to work at a blistering 20 to 30 miles an hour. It was a great experience. I loved it. At 20 to 30 miles an hour until I hit Misako, which is, which is, as you know, quite a hill. My speed would plummet, and the traffic would build up behind me, and I'd be waving those dog walkers around me, but they still said some hurtful things, actually. Um, the truth of the matter is that mopeds are not really built for someone of my gravitas. Um, and those pedestrians who race walked past me looked at me a little bit like I was a trained bear on a tricycle in the circus. Um, but when I rode into Central School, the students looked at me like I was cool. To the students, I, I, I was riding a motorcycle. They looked at me like I was Marlon Brando revving up a Harley in the wild one. Not like I was a later Marlon Brando riding a Segway to the Cinnabon, which is probably what most people saw. And I have to admit, it was a wonderful feeling to get that, that absolute uncritical approval from my students. Well, that all ended when I started teaching in the high school. I switched my moped for a Hyundai Accent. Um, it has the same engine as the moped. Uh, it's just smaller. And uh, it's neon green, which is, which is uh, cool-ish. And I, uh, I got it out of one of those machines where you do the, re the machine, uh, the, the aluminum can recycling, like at Stop and Shop. It turns out those machines, that's what they do. They make Hyundai Accents. <laughs> Anyways, I got my Hyundai Accent, and I, I drove that to work. And none of the students seemed to think it was cool. No one ever asked me if I did the stunt work for Fast and the Furious 3. And when I played basketball in the gym, the few times that I did that, 
uh, the term Jordan-esque never came to, to anyone's uh, lips. I never, I never heard it. Now, I, I hate to say this, but the truth is it's not just me who's lost his cool factor. I've heard the students talking about adults in general, and I'm afraid to say it's not good. Now, expressions like over the hill, completely senile, and old coot have been bandied about, and, and that's not just when they're talking about Mr. Evans. <laughs> it's almost as if you high school students no longer believe that we adults have the answers to all life's problems. Of course, this change isn't all that surprising. We teachers have tried to instill in you a critical attitude towards unsubstantiated claims. But here is the irony. You may not believe that we adults have the answers to all of life's problems, but I believe that you do. I've worked with you, I've listened to you, and I know what potential you have. The class of 2010 is blessed with the knowledge, the creativity, and the talent to make a real difference in this world. There are students in this group whose independent projects in psychology or physics blew me away. Students who had a terrific understanding of the material and an ability to apply that material in new and unique ways, which keeps me inspired as a teacher. There are students here who have told me about their deep passions for a whole wide variety of, of different fields. There's one young man here who's told me about his passion for mechanics and engineering. He plans to open up an auto shop someday. And when he does, I'm hoping he'll consider tricking out my Hyundai because <laughs> it needs a little help. There are two young people here today who I know pretty well who are planning to go into nursing. And these two young women have a level of compassion knowledge, intelligence, empathy, which would make them the kind of people who I would want to have take out, uh, care of me after my next basketball game. There are visual artists here today whose work inspires the viewer, and there are musicians here today whose work transports the listener. There are athletes here whose dedication to teams and their love of their sport have motivated me to maybe, someday, possibly, start to think about a semi-regular exercise routine. <laughs> Finally, there are some students in this class who have overcome tremendous obstacles to be here, academic obstacles, physical obstacles, and emotional obstacles. And each of you is so much stronger than you probably know. You have my deep admiration and respect. So you see, I know what the class of 2010 is capable of. And I not only believe that you can change the world, I fully am confident that you will. Back in the 80s, when I graduated from high school, there was a, a hair band called Poison. They were made up mostly of bandanas and hairspray. And while I was writing this speech, I kept thinking about one of their songs where Brett Michaels sings that he's looking for something to believe in. Well, from where I am standing, there's a whole lot out there to believe in. So in conclusion, I give all of us something to believe in the class of 2010. Thank you.